Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. Galactic Starfighter, better known as GSF, is Star Wars The Old Republic's space PvP mode. It's a completely separate mode of gameplay. You can start at level 1, and doesn't affect your main character's progress or level. You can even play unlimited GSF as a preferred or free-to-play player. You just get reduced rewards. GSF is extremely unique in the world of RPG MMOs. There's nothing quite like it out there. There's an immense amount of customization you can give to your ship, and the modifications and gearing are a lot more varied than normal PvP. You build a ship that's uniquely yours, then you put it together in a team-based battle of 12 versus 12. There's two main parts when it comes to GSF. Your hangar panel, and equipment on your ships, and the actual gameplay. You can open your hangar by pressing the ship icon attached to your minimap. It's between an icon of three people and an icon of a planet. The default hotkey for opening the hangar is your H key. To see your ships, click the Ships tab on the top left of the hangar window. The Ships tab shows what ships you have available to play with. There are four main classes of ships. Strike fighters are considered the jack of all trade ships. They're decent at everything and great for learning, but once you start getting good, they can underperform because they have no specialization. They have the ability to equip two different blasters or missiles for versatility. Scouts are fast, agile, and very maneuverable. They are ideal to have in a dogfight when a swarm of ships are attacking each other. They are for more advanced players who are good at flying without running into things. They have the ability to equip a system, which gives a powerful buff to their abilities. Bombers are the tanks of GSF. They are defenders with a lot of health and armor and can lay a variety of turrets or mines down to protect an objective. Gunships are another good ship for beginners and are one of the easiest to fly. They have a long-range railgun and snipe other ships from far away while staying still. The downside is if you're playing one, you have to be very aware of your surroundings once you've found a good place to snipe from. Each class of ship, Strike Fighter, Scout, Bomber, and Gunship, has four ships you can choose from within it, for a total of 16 ships you could potentially play. Some you get by default, some you earn by playing GSF, and some can be bought on the cartel market. Each one has a slightly different look and different components you can equip. Which exact ship within class you play will depend on how you like to play with the different abilities available through components you equip. To see the components for your ships, click the Components tab at the top of the hangar window. Each class of ship has different component slots, and each individual ship has different components you can equip. All ships have things like shields and engines, but not all ships have things like systems or reactors. You can learn more about each component as you click it on the panel on the right. The major components each have special abilities, and you'll want to review them to decide which ones you might enjoy playing with. The minor components at the bottom are just for stats. Maxin, our expert GSFer for this episode, recommends getting as much accuracy as possible when you equip your ship with components, even choosing it over damage. New equipable components can be unlocked for your ship as you play GSF, things like the speed you're moving, your components, your passive abilities, and your enemies' abilities can all affect your accuracy, which is what allows you to actually lock on and hit enemy ships you see. You can also upgrade each of your components on the panel on the right, with currency you earn through GSF. If you fully upgrade every component to the last tier on a ship, your ship becomes mastered and you gain an extra 10% boost to its rewards when you play GSF. Ships bought through the cartel market will also have this 10% boost, but they won't have the upgraded components. The currency you earn from playing GSF is called Requisition. There's two types of requisition you can earn, Fleet Rec and Ship Rec. How much of each you have is shown at the top of the hangar. Ship Requisition, the green one, can only be used to buy components and upgrades for the ship that originally earned it. Each of your ships will have a different amount of Ship Rec available depending on how much you've played them. You can switch between your selected ships on the panel at the very bottom of the middle of the hangar. Fleet Rec, the purple one, can be spent on any of your ships or to buy new ships, and is a lot rarer to get. If you have cartel coins, you can convert individual ship requisition to fleet requisition, the rarer one, by clicking the green and purple arrow at the top of the hangar. You can convert as little or as much as you want and doesn't cost too many cartel coins. Any fleet rec, ship rec, Ships, components, and upgrades you acquire are bound to the character you earn them on. If you want to start playing GSF on another character, you'll be starting from scratch. 
Your crew gives you passive buffs and special abilities in battle. You get some crew members for free by default. Some can be unlocked as you gain them in your class story in the main part of the game. Some can be gained by doing the Knights of the Fallen Empire Alliance alerts, and the rest can be unlocked with fleet requisition. There are four different roles you need to fill for your crew. An offensive crew member, defensive, tactical, and engineering. You'll need to choose a crew companion for each of these roles and gain the passive buffs for of each one that you choose. What exactly you choose is up to you and how you like to play. Go through the companions you have available and see what you like by rolling over the abilities on the right. Of those four crew members you choose, you'll also have to make one your co-pilot. You'll gain the active ability of your co-pilot and they'll shout encouragement at you as you play. Maxen recommends to try In Your Sights as your active co-pilot ability. It helps a lot in deathmatch scenarios where there's a cluster of fighters. Use it as an AoE and it reduces evasion making the other team sitting ducks. He also recommends Wingman as an active ability as a bomber or gunship. It gives your nearby teammates a powerful accuracy buff. Once you've geared your ships with components and chosen your ship's crew, it's time to start flying. You can click the yellow question mark button on the top right of the hangar window to launch the tutorial level that you can play and re-enter at any time. On the next Academy episode, we'll be covering how to fly, your hotkeys, the user interface while flying, what ships are good for what situations, and the different types of GSF matches. The knowledge for this episode was generously taught by Max and Grail, a passionate GSFer on the Ebon Hawk who wanted to help create a definitive guide for beginners and welcome new players into Galactic Starfighter. If you want to show your support for this series, or to get notified when the next episode of the Academy comes out, subscribe to this channel.